One of the most important rules to set is the bet type condition. The bet type condition tells the bot to make bets. Without this rule, it will not place bets. Only one bet type rule is necessary for each strategy. There are 10 bet types available in total. Nine of them are found in the Selections Conditions tab, and one of them is found in the Staking Plans tab. The most commonly used bet types are bet type by favorite position, bet type by runner position, default bet type, and bet on my selections only. Other bet types available are manual bet type, bet type by handicap, bet type by market, bet type on random selections, overall sequence of bet types, and bet on imported selections and tips. The last bet type, bet on imported selections and tips, is the only bet type rule not found in the selections conditions tab. It is found in the staking plans tab. In the example strategies, the bet types are already added. If we add a new strategy, we need to add a bet type by clicking on Add Rule, and in the Selections Conditions area, we can see the different bet types. You will notice that the bet type rules have a blue and pink icon next to them, and note again that Bet On Imported Selections and Tips is found in the Staking Plans area, but the other nine bet types are found in the Selection Conditions area. It's important to use bet types carefully. One of the most common areas that can be made is using the default bet type rule combined with other bet type rules. For example, the default bet type and the bet type by favorite position rules. If both of these are selected, it will allow betting on all selections. This is because the default bet type rule will set the bet type on all selections. To bet only on the favorite by position, we need to only use the bet type by favorite position rule. That means that the default bet type means it will bet on all selections unless other rules are used, other strategy filters. The default bet type and the bet type by favorite position rule used together still means the strategy will bet on all selections unless other rules are used because the default bet type is telling it to bet on all selections. Only if you use the bet type by favorite position by itself will it bet only on selections matching this condition. So it's important to only use one bet type condition for each strategy. Let's take a closer look at each bet type. First, bet type by favorite position. The bet type by favorite position will place bets on selections based on their odds. For example, we can add a new strategy to bet on horse racing favorites. Then we need to add market conditions, an event filter to tell it to bet on horse racing, and a markets filter to tell it to bet on win markets only. And we need to add the important bet type, bet type by favorite position. Here we can tell it to back the runner with favorite position 1. Back runner with favorite position 1 tells the bot to bet on the runner that has the lowest odds in the market. The favorite back runner with favorite position 2 would tell the bot to bet on the runner with the second lowest odds in that market, the second favorite. You can also select lay runner with favorite position 1, which would tell the bot to place a lay bet on the favorite. Keep the only one bet per favorite position box checked to ensure only one bet is placed on a runner. Only uncheck this box if you are making a more advanced strategy that requires multiple bets on the same runner. With these current settings, the bot will lay every favorite in horse races. So from here we should add more filters to specify which markets and selections we want the strategy to bet on. Next, let's look at bet type by runner position and select back runner with runner position 1. This tells the bot to place bets on selections based on their position on the Betfair market. For football match odds, runner position 1 is the home win, runner position 2 is the away win, runner position 3 is the draw. So this bet type can be used to set the strategy to back 
or lay the draw, the home win, or the away win. For football correct score markets, runner position 1 is the nil-nil scoreline. Runner position 2 is the nil-one scoreline. Runner position 7 is the 1-2 scoreline. So this bet type can be used to set the strategy to back or lay specific correct scores. For greyhounds, runner position 1 is trap 1. Runner position 2 is trap 2. Runner position 6 is trap 6. So this bet type can be used to set the strategy to back or lay specific tracks. For horse racing, runner position 1 is the horse listed first in the market. Runner position 2 is the second horse listed in the market. Again, keep the only one bet per favourite position box checked to ensure only one bet is placed on a runner. Only uncheck this box if you are making a more advanced strategy that requires multiple bets on the same runner. A key thing to remember here is that the difference between bet type by favourite position and bet type by runner position is that bet type by favourite position is done by odds, and bet type by runner position is done by the market screen order. Next, let's look at the default bet type. The default bet type allows you to set your strategy to either back or lay selections that match your filters. This bet type is always used in combination with other selection filters when you want a strategy to place bets on selections that match your specific criteria. For example, you only want to bet on horses that have won on a ground before, or football teams that have scored in their last three home games, or greyhounds that have come first or second in their last races, and so on. Another way to think of this bet type is bet on any selections that satisfies my rules. When using the default bet type rule, it is important that you understand that this rule will set the bet type to back or lay on all selections. This will allow the strategy to bet on all selections in the market. This means that you must use other filtering rules that will filter selections and prevent betting on selections if they do not satisfy your rules. Let's make an example strategy using the default bet type. Let's say that we want to bet on horses that are course or distance winners. They have won at this course before, or they have won at this distance before. And let's say we only want to bet if they have odds between 3 and 20. And let's say we only want to bet on those horses if they finished in the top 3 in their last race. To turn this idea into strategy rules, on the strategies tab we would add a new strategy, give it a name and a description, then from the market conditions we add an events filter to set it to only bet on horse racing, and we add a markets filter to only bet on win markets. Then from the selection conditions, if we hadn't already added our default bet type, we would add our default bet type from the selection conditions area by clicking on the default bet type add rule button, and we would set it to back. This will make the strategy place back bets on selections that match our filters. So now we need to add filters. In the selection conditions tab, we add a rule, racing, filter horses, by BF, C, D and CD, and we want to allow betting on horses that are course winners, they've won on this course before, they are distance winners, they've won at this distance before, or if they're both, they've won over the course and the distance, and we click save. Next, in the selection conditions tab, we are going to edit the min-max selection price, and we want it to check that any runner has a back price between 3 and 20. Please note that even though we set any runner, this is a selection condition which is only affecting the runner we will bet on. It is not a market condition. It is only focusing on the runner we are considering betting on. If there are runners in the market with odds outside the 3 to 20 range, such as a favourite with odds under 3 or long shots with odds over 20, they will not stop this strategy from betting on a runner in the same market that matches our selection filters. Next, from the Selections Conditions tab, we will add another rule. We will add Racing, 
filter horses by detailed information. And we set it to allow betting on horses whose form is one of the values below, one, two, or three. And we mean we want the form to end with one, two, or three, meaning it finished first, second, or third in its last race, the number at the end of its form. Even with these filters, it is possible that all the runners satisfy all the rules and that bets get placed on all of them. Because of this, it is important to be careful when using default bet type and to test your settings in simulation mode before using real mode. If we want the strategy only to bet on the horse that matches those filters and has the highest odds, then we can add a rule from the Selections Conditions tab called Selection by Highest or Lowest. It is at the bottom of the list, so you may need to maximise the window to see it. Selection by Highest Lowest. Then we set it to Allow Betting only on one selection with the highest back price, and Save. When you save the rule, make sure that this rule is at the bottom of the Selections Conditions tab in the Strategy Rules. This is so that this rule is only executed after all the other rules have been executed, as the bot processes the rules in the order seen on the Strategy tabs. Please note, this rule means the bot will only place one bet on the one runner that meets those criteria and has the highest odds. So if there are multiple horses matching the criteria, the horse with the highest odds is selected at that time. But the bot is constantly checking the markets according to your monitoring settings. In the Tools and Settings Monitoring Settings, we see our Get Price Refresh Rate is 1000 milliseconds by default. So the prices are updated every second. If the prices of those horses change and a different runner becomes the highest odds a few seconds later, under the current settings, the strategy will place a second bet on the new highest runner that matches our conditions. If we want to make absolutely sure the strategy only bets on one horse, then we need to limit the strategy to only bet a maximum of one bet per market. To do this, we edit the strategy details and change the max number of bets per market to one. The default is 20, so you need to change this yourself. The strategy is nearly ready to go. Next, we edit the time to bet if we want to change it and the stake if we want to change it. Double check each tab in the strategy to make sure the settings are as you want. Then run it in simulation mode first to see if it works correctly, and then in real mode with small stakes to make sure the strategy is running properly. So the default bet type is for when we want to bet on selections that match specific filters. There are many different filters that can be added, and always make sure you test your settings in simulation mode. Next, let's look at the bet type, Bet on My Selections Only. With the bet type, Bet on My Selections, you can set the bot to automatically bet on manual selections at a specified time. You can place bets at a set time before the start without having to wait in front of a computer using the My S checkbox in the Market Selections grid view, together with a Bet on my selections only strategy. You can also use this bet type to apply a strategy to manual selections, such as staking plans. This means you can manually select the runners that you want to apply a strategy to, that may include price rules, staking plans, and so on. You can also apply a strategy to manual selections and add special rules to some of the selections by adding columns in the selections grid view. You can also apply multiple strategies to separate manual selection sets. You can do this by creating multiple sets of your selections and applying different betting strategies or staking plans to them by exporting each set as tips and then applying different strategies to each tip set. Let's look exactly how to use each of these functions. To set the bot to automatically bet on manual selections at a specified time, Go to the Markets tab and load the sport that you want to bet on. 
Then find the event that you want and expand it to the grid view by clicking on the Show Hide Selections box on the left. Then simply check the box in the My S column on the left for the selection you want to bet on. Now go to the Strategies tab, find the example Bet on My Selection strategy. Open its details by clicking on the Show Hide tabs toggle. You can review and change the settings of this strategy here. Check each tab to make sure the settings are as you want. In the Mark and Conditions tab, this example strategy is currently set to bet five minutes before the event starts. You can change this to ten minutes before the event starts, or any time that you want. You can also set it to stop betting at a certain point before the start time. You can also set it to bet during in play, or to start betting in play after a certain amount of time has passed. The other time to bet settings are more advanced and can be left alone for the moment. The overrounds rule is there to make sure we get valid prices, so we should not remove this. Next, in the Selection Conditions tab, the Min Max Selection Price rule is currently set from 1.01 .01 to 20. You should change this value if you want, for example, to 1.5 to 20. This rule will be applied to all your manually selected bets. Here it is checking the back price of any runner is between 1.5 and 20. Next, we see the bet type Bet on My Favorites Only which is the bet on my selections only bet type rule. Here we can set the strategy to back or lay selections that we have selected using the my s my selections column at the selections grid. Under that is the back and lay price ratio. This is another safety rule to make sure we get valid prices. We should not remove this. Next, in the price settings tab, we see that the strategy is currently set to bet on the currently available price, but it is also set to request a price two ticks lower than that to make sure that the bet gets placed. This means that if there is enough liquidity available at the current price for your stake size, the bet will get matched at the currently available price. But if there is not enough liquidity, money being offered on the Betfair website, at those odds, then some of the stake will get matched at one tick lower and two ticks lower if needed. If you wanted to change and edit this, you can change it here. If you want, you can even set it to request a higher price. But in this case, the strategy is currently set to request for a price two ticks lower to ensure that the bet gets matched. Next in the staking tab, we see the level initial stake is set to two pounds. We can change this to whatever size we want, or we can add staking plants if we want to, that we can apply to our selections. Next, the bet's persistence rule tells the bot what to do if the bet is not matched when first placed. Cancel will mean it will just cancel the bet if it's not matched. Keep means that it will keep the bet active even when the market goes in play. Take SP means that if the market is a Betfair start price market and your initial bet was not matched, then it will take the Betfair start price. This only works for markets that are Betfair SP markets. This strategy is now ready to bet on your manually selected events. But also we can use the bet type Bet on My Selections Only to apply a strategy to manual selections such as staking plans or other general rules we want to put on our selections. For example, if we want to bet on the odds of our selections 10 minutes before the event starts, but only if the prices are over evens, then we can change the price settings to from 2 to 20. Then the strategy will not bet on our selections if those odds are under 2. But we don't want to sit in front of our computer waiting for 10 minutes before the start of an event every time just to check if the odds are above 2 or not. Also, if we wanted, we could add a staking plan to the selections we are making. In the Staking Plans tab, we can choose to add one of many famous staking plans, such as the Bookies Bank Staking Plan, Dutching for a Target Profit, the Kelly Staking Plan, the Pro Staking Plan, and so on. Here I will add the percent of betting bank staking plan. I can give it a starting betting bank size of 100, 
or I could tell it to use my actual Betfair balance. I can tell it what percent of the bank to use, for example, bet 3% of the betting bank on each event. I can add options such as ratchet staking, which means the stake will never reduce. I can even use a percentage from another bank. So with this handy function, I can set this strategy to remember its own running betting bank that started on 100, bet 3% on each bet, and it will apply that to all of my selections. Since I'm using the percent of betting bank staking plan, I don't need this level initial stake. By applying a strategy to all of our selections, we can even do more advanced strategies. For example, in the after bets rules, we can add a hedge or close position rule. This would tell the strategy to hedge the position under certain conditions. For example, if the price went down by 20% because it looks like the bet is going to win, then with this setting it would automatically trade out for me. You can set up more advanced rules for this. You can also use the BF Bot Manager to apply general rules to your selections, but also add individual rules to some selections. For example, here in the selections conditions, I have limited the price to between 2 and 20. But if I had one manual selection where I wanted to change that rule, for example, if I wanted to make a special exception for this horse, then I can do that here in the grids view. On the grid view, I can right click on any of these column headers and select column chooser and then I can add a minimum and maximum price column by double clicking here. Then for my selection I can add a special rule and say that I'm happy to bet on it if its minimum price is above 2 but its maximum price is up to 100. So now for this selection I've set a special price range while my general rules put the limit at 20 I've put a specific rule here of up to 100. To make sure that the strategy listens to these exceptions, in the min max selection price area, I need to tick the use selection min max price range from selections form if it is manually set. With this box checked, this strategy will look out for exceptions to this rule that are set in the selections grid. Without this tick, it would just ignore any of the extra columns set in that grid view. So I want to tick this here so that it will take notice of exceptions I put here. So in this case, my strategy will apply general rules to selections. But if I add columns here in the grid view, I can make it do specific things. Another very useful function, you can also apply multiple strategies to separate manual selection sets. By saving each manually selected set as a tipster and then applying different strategies to each of those tipster sets, which are in fact your manual selection sets. For example, if I want to manually select some football matches for lay the draw trading, and I also want to manually select some horses to lay using a recovery staking plan, then I would need to select those events separately in two sets and apply two different strategies to them. First, I'm going to select the horses that I want to lay. I'm going to click on the My Selections checkbox. I'm going to lay this horse as well. After I've selected the horses that I want to use in my Lay Horses with Recovery strategy, I click on Move My S to Manage Tips form and I give the selection set a name. Here, I'm going to call it my selection set 2, lay horses with recovery. And this ha leave this box checked here. This will remove the checks from all of the my selections so that I can select my next group of matches, my lay the draw football matches. Now those tick boxes have been removed. Next, I'm going to select the football games that I want to lay the draw on or, well, I want to apply my lay the draw strategy to. I'll select this game, and this game, and this game. Now I've selected the games that I want to lay the draw in, I will also simply export them, move my S to manage tips form. Here I'm going to give it a different name. I'll call it my selection set 3, lay the draw. Again, I leave this checkbox, deselect all selections in my S checkbox column. I leave that there. 
then in the strategies main page in the manage tips area I can see those two sets have come up the horses that I've selected to bet on and also the football games I've selected to bet on. They have come up with two tipster or provider names. I can now take these two selection sets and apply them to two different strategies. In the main strategies area, you can set up betting on these selection sets by duplicating the example strategy bet on all imported tips. Click the checkbox and click duplicate selected. Then we can edit the name. I'm going to call it Bet on All Imported Tips Set Two Horses. And then in the Staking tab, find the Bet on Imported Selections Tips rule and edit that to add the name of the selection set that you created. If you forget the name, you can see it here in the tips form. My selection set two lay horses with recovery. Click Save. Then you can edit the strategy settings to bet on that set of selections as you want it to. For example, changing the time to bet, the default bet type. If you want to lay those horses, then you'd have to change the default bet to lay. Changing the price settings, changing the staking settings, choosing how much you want to bet on each horse. Or if you want to add a staking plan to that, then again we can duplicate this. Edit it, change the staking settings so that it bets on the selection set we want it to bet on, the lay the draw set, and check the settings of your strategy so that it will act how you want it to. And I could apply a staking plan to that if I wanted, such as the percent of betting bank to bet 1% of my starting bank of 100, and then take away the other stake. And after you set up a strategy how you think you want it. Always check it in simulation mode before using it in real mode. In this way, the bet on my selections function, together with the move my selections to the manage tips form, is a really useful way to be able to apply different strategies to different sets of manually selected events. Please note that when you're applying different strategies to different sets of my selections, then you're using the bet on imported selection tips bet type, not the previously explained bet on my selections bet type that we began with. Another bet type available is the manual bet type. With this bet type set, the strategy only follows the manually selected bet type back or lay which was set in the market grid selection view columns, not its own general bet type. This bet type is used if you want to select back or lay a selection manually for each event. To do this, you need to add a back and lay checkbox column in the market selection grid view by right clicking any column header, select column chooser, and then adding double clicking to add a back or lay column. Another bet type available is the bet type by Handicap. This is for goal lines and Asian handicap markets. Here the bet type needs to be set by using a handicap value. If you want to place a back bet on over 4.5 goals markets that match your criteria, then select the back option, the over for goal lines option, and 4.5 in the handicap drop down menu. Or if you want to place a lay bet on the away team with an Asian handicap of minus 1.25, then select the lay option for away for Asian handicap option and select minus 1.25 from the handicap drop down menu. Note that you need to set more filtering rules for this strategy to work. You need to set market filters, event filters, and so on in the market conditions tab, and other price rules, and other selection filters in the selection conditions tab. Another bet type available is bet type by market. With this bet type, the bet type that is set in the columns back and lay of the main market's data grid view will be used for all selections on that market. This allows you to set different bet types for each market. 
To use this, you need to add columns to the Market Grids view. Note that this is the Selections Grid View column header, and this is the Market Grids View column header. Close this. We need to add columns to the Market Grids View header. If you right-click on any Markets Grid View column header and select Column Chooser, and double-click to add a back and lay checkbox. This will allow you to select one of those bet types for each market by clicking on the checkbox. This is so that if this market contains a selection that matches the filters of the strategy, it will then look at the bet type set for that market for the type of bet to make on it. Again, please note that you need to set more filtering rules for the strategy to work. You need to set market filters, event filters, and so on in the Market Conditions tab, and also price rules and other selection filters in the Selection Conditions tab. Another bet type available is bet type on random selections. This bet type will place random bets on markets that match the filters set in this strategy. You can set the bet type, back or lay, and the number of runners that can be bet on in each market. If we want to make it choose one random runner, or two random runners, or three random runners in a market that matches our filters, we can select it here. Another bet type available is overall sequence of bet types. This condition allows you to set the sequence of bet types to be used on bets that will be placed by the strategy. You can specify any sequence of bet types. For example, BBLLB would mean back back lay lay back, which means that the first bet will be a back bet type, the second a back bet type, the third a lay bet type, the fourth a lay bet type, and the fifth a back bet type. We can also set it to restart this sequence after a win, or to restart on a loss, or to restart at the end. One important thing to get the correct sequence that will restart on win, loss, end, you should also add to our, the strategy an unsettled markets condition. This is found in the market conditions tab, and you may need to maximize your window to find it as it's at the bottom. And here we need to set the maximum number of unsettled markets to 1. This means the strategy will wait for all previous bets in this strategy to be settled before it moves on to a new bet, which is what we want in order for it to properly go along this sequence of bet types. The last bet type available is the bet on imported selections and tips bet type. This last bet type, bet on imported selections and tips, is the only bet type rule that is not found in the selection conditions tab. It is found in the staking tab. This bet type is used for betting on imported tips from a file or from a URL or from a website, and also for manually created selection sets that we've created with the My Selections option. So to conclude, there are 10 bet types on the BFBot Manager. You can find nine of them in the Selection Conditions tab and one of them in the Staking Plans tab. Each strategy should only have one bet type used in it. If you have any problems, then please feel free to contact us and we will do our best to help you. Thank you.